how do you find the perfect travel partner? All carry-on items should now be stowed securely, either in an overhead bin or under the seat in front of you. Bo here and welcome to my channel. On this channel we talk about travel, we talk about travel hacks, talk about life hacks, talk about lifestyle. Welcome and today I'm going to tell you how to find the perfect travel partner. Number one, treat it like a business and by that I mean hold interviews, have Skype, I guess dates is a bad word for it, have Skype interviews, have Skype meetings, treat it like a business. I'm going to use Catherine quite a bit on this whole video just says a example and I actually did all these steps with her. So like call them up, have a face-to-face -face Skype. She lives in Alabama, so I couldn't really, you know, doing face-to-face -face doesn't really work, but Skype, there's Facebook Messenger, there's all of these and you guys can discuss everything, every facet on your trip. So treat it like a business, treat it like a partnership. Don't treat it as in you're going in blind, discuss everything treat it like a business. Number two, so on these Skype interviews, go over your budget. Budget is the number one thing that I personally think, well, in my life that can completely ruin a travel partnership, can, tra can, can really ruin families, but can run a lot of things. But especially whenever you're a budget backpacker, money is extremely important. You're trying to stretch that $100 out sometimes to five or six days. So it's one of those deals that if somebody's traveling with you and they're going to be gone for two weeks, well, their budget, they may be spending $100, $150 a day. And you may be spending that same amount of money over a month, month and a half that they're going to spend in two weeks. So making a budget and sticking to it and, and discussing the budget, that's, number, that's, that's like the first thing that I actually did with Catherine was discuss the budget just simply because I don't want to get over there and one of us not be happy because one of us is spending way too much money. So whenever we made, but like even like once we got on the trip, we always booked stuff t t together. I was mainly the one that booked, booked a, a lot of it, but I always made a point and be like, okay, so your half is going to be $12 a night. Are you good with that? Like just stuff like that, just be, can, can consider it and just re, re remember that, that yes, they may not want to spend nearly as much money as you, but by you fle being flexible and kind of going over to their budget to stay just a little bit more, you could learn something like how to stretch that money even further. You could have learned, you know, I don't really need to have that coffee every single morning. That saves me $3 a day and I can use that money. I can pull it up and over a week I could have, what is that, like $21? So yeah, over a week I saved $21, which is a whole nother day of travel. So yes, budgeting is extremely, extremely important and make sure that you discuss that with your future traveling companion. Number three, go over the objective of your trip. So I'm gonna actually use two people on this. So Catherine, whenever we dis discussed this, we both wanted to, I personally wanted to get back on YouTube. She wanted to start a, a YouTube channel and me being me, I'm always down to teach somebody. I don't know what it is with me. I always wanna teach somebody. I always want to show them different ways and I want to learn from them as well. Cause I know I kinda got Catherine started and then all of a sudden she got on uh, on a YouTube and she started watching Photoshop to tutorials and me, I'm not very good at Photoshop. I'm decent at Lightroom. And before long, I was learning from her on photo, photo a shop. But even now we still bounce, we still bounce off. I, I deals on YouTube. I helped her with her banner the other day. I just changed mine today. Like it's just one of those deals that, that, that was our goal. Our goal was to basically, I guess, grow as people and plus start these YouTube channels and mine. I wanted to revitalize it because it's been dormant for a year or two. And I'm gonna bring one more in. Uh, it would have been two years ago, I traveled with my friend Albert. Me and Albert grew up together. We went to the same high school, went to same college. We worked out together in college. Like we're like best, best, best friends. But with him, it was different because he came over for three weeks last year in, in Thailand. Well, of course, our budgets don't match up because I'm, I'm on a marathon. He's on a three week race to see as much as he can. However, I, like with Albert being, being my best friend, I, I completely 
tailored my budget to to his. And by doing doing that, yes, it cost me a little bit more per day, but but like the like our 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 accommodations and stuff were just that much more incredible, and it ended up, ended up being an awesome, awesome, awesome trip. And it's one of those deals that not a lot of people actually get the opportunity to travel the world with their best friend. I had been waiting on that for years for one of my friends to finally be like, "Hey, Bo, I want to come over and see why you love Thailand so much, why you love South Southeast Asia." So yeah, I'm getting off topic here, but yeah, make sure that you discuss your goals. So with the, with, with that trip, our goal was basically to take, well, my goal is to take pictures and his goal is to just have as much fun as possible in three weeks, which he came over at the end of my trip. So there was actually nice that he'd go out and have fun by himself and stuff just because I was exhausted. I had already been out on the road for two months and the longer I stay out on the road, the less I go out at night, the more I get up early, the more I just, I'm just more of a lazy laid back traveler. Like that sounds bad, but the more I'm just re, re relaxed and I'm like, you know, I just like, it's just one of those deals that my drive just isn't nearly as there, which is, which is perfectly fine. Cause I realize that as soon as I start re relaxing some, I spend a little bit less money, but I just have to be careful. I don't get too relaxed or I won't do anything. So yeah, make sure that you have a objective. That's your number three. Number four, I already talked about this just a little bit, but be willing to compromise. You know, I'm gonna bring Catherine into this one, just kind of as an example. I already used it with, 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 with Albert. His uh, budget was just a little bit higher than mine just because he was there for three weeks, but I compromised and it all worked out great. Uh, but with, with, with Catherine, she wanted to go to Oslob to Whale Shark, to Whale Shark Watch, swim with him, you know, and me personally, I had never done it. I've drove through there and I'd seen the tourists like the like, like in the morning and there was just tons and tons of tourists. And for me, that just really wasn't that exciting. I was just like, yeah, but you know, I was just like, you know what, I'll compromise. So what, what we did was I actually just made it into one of our, one of our, uh, I guess trails, I guess trails is a bad word. I just made it into one of our, like we had plenty of time, so I just filled it into one of our spots. We we're actually traveling through the area, and I was like, "Hey, let's just go do this." I know that this is this is uh, what you really, 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 really want to do, and it worked out. So even though I did not really want to do it, I mean, it it worked out great because we actually found a hotel, I believe, for fourteen dollars per night there, which is just like a steal of a deal. And we actually stayed there for two nights just because we just really. Like wherever, wherever, wherever you travel with me, it seems to be a lot slower pace. I don't go, 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 go. I may go watch the whale sharks, but I also want to stay in the town because it's one of those deals whenever somebody says, ah, you just go to the whale sharks and leave. Don't stay in the town. And my mind is like, oh, I kind of want to stay in the town. So by compromising, I was just like, yeah, sure. Let's, yeah, sure. We can swing by there and do, do that. But by doing that, I also want to just hang out in the town. I don't I like I don't want to get in a big 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 hurry. And on that same day we also or that the afternoon we actually went up to a water waterfall as well that I knew about. So it's one of those deals that you got to be able to comp compromise and keep the peace. Number 5. It's pretty simple. Be honest and straight up with each other. I just touched on that to be straight up, but be honest. Uh no matter what you're feeling, if you're homesick, if you like have medical issues or something, that's what your travel partner is there for, is to help you through those, through those things, especially whenever you're in a foreign country and you don't know a lot of people, whenever, whenever you're traveling with, with somebody, by the end of it, like if you're really good friends, it's gonna be end up like they're like your brother or sister. So it's one of those deals that if there's, a, so if there's an issue or something like that, they're there to help you solve those issues. So be honest with them, be straight up with them. Don't worry about judgment because like, yeah, me and Catherine bicker and we fight like constantly, but it's like brother and sister kind of fighting. It's, it's very, 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 very uh, weird. But at the end of the day, we have each other's backs and we're hundred percent honest with each other. So it's one of those deals that honesty can completely change a whole situ situation that if you just tell them what you, what you want, don't play mental games. Those are childish and you know, nobody has time for those. Number six. I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm gonna say it. Nobody's perfect, and I mean nobody. So, and if you're chasing after per per perfection, I would say to probably ditch that whole thing extremely, extremely quick. Everybody makes mis mistakes, everybody fails. It depends on how you react once you do that. I know whenever I was traveling with Catherine, I definitely made some mis mis mistakes. I did some bookings on a hotel that 
I messed up on, booked a couple of days early, booked a couple of days late, you know. Uh, made a booking where it actually cost us, it ended up costing us $70 each per night and, and stuff like that. And how I tried to make up for it, I was, I was just like, hey, it's my mistake. It's not a problem. If you want me to pay for the whole thing, I'll pay for the whole thing. Like, it's one of those deals that it's my mistake. And Catherine being Catherine, she compromised. She's like, oh, no, Bo, it's not a problem. Like... <laughs> like you're booking all these, you're working your hardest at it, so it's not a problem. So it's one of those deals that nobody's perfect. Every single person's going to make mis mistakes. And even if it's your girlfriend, husband, wife, I've never been married, so I don't know anything about that. But girlfriend, boyfriend, they're going to make mis mistakes, especially whenever you're on the road because you're with each other 24-7. Your travel partner, you're with each other 24-7. You're going to see every facet of their life. You're going to see what makes them mad. You're seeing what makes them happy. You're going to see where they slip up, and they're also going to see that same thing in you. They're going to see where you're weak, where you're strong. So remember, nobody's perfect, and just be patient and just roll with the punches. And if you guys like have each other's back, you can get through anything. Er, hold up. What are you doing? Please like this video and subscribe. You watch the whole thing, so you might as well go ahead and hit that like button. And if you are not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And if you really, really, really like me, you can even like click the subscribe button and there's a little dinger, a little bell button you can click. So whenever I upload a video every day on Thursday at 7 p.m., it'll come up and be like, hey, Bo Knight just uploaded a video. You should go check it out. Those are your six tips to finding the perfect travel partner. And just like I said, there's nobody's perfect, so I really mislabeled this video. But if you do have a travel partner and you actually have other tips, please comment down below. Or if you have other ideas, I know the one that's completely changed mine is I treat it like a like I'm a business, like I'm going into business with these people. Because really you are. Because if you're hanging out with, together 24-7, they are the people that are basically going to shape you. You are who you hang out with. So re re remember that. So whenever you're, whenever you're selecting a travel partner, it's very, very important and not to take it lightly. And if, they're, and if you don't think they're a good fit, just move on. Don't drag it out. Don't go with them because you feel guilty. Just move on. So yeah, that's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed this one. This one is a little different than normal. I think I brought quite a bit of passion just because like I, like I have been through quite a few travel partners. I haven't ever been mean to them or anything, but it's one of those deals there was a couple where I was like, you know... I think it's time for us to go our separate ways. This just isn't working. And it, the weird thing is most of them came down to budget. So yeah, I guess I'll see you guys next week. Bo out. It's not, it's not, it's Dominic the donkey. Clickety, we stop, we stop. It's Dominic the donkey.